Hey there! Welcome to Really Scary with Really Very. Tonight, we're going to be joined by some of our friends as they tell us their spookiest stories. But before we get to that, let's check in with our buddy Clifford. He's celebrating his very first Halloween. Hey y'all, it's your old pal Cliff and pretty excited. I'm here. The really very the really very scary show. And um I'm going to partake in my first Halloween. I grew up very religious, so I was told like, you know, you mess around with Halloween, you're going to fucking get some demons in your life. You know, there's basically a porthole on Halloween and you you fuck around dressing like demons and all this bullshit and you're gonna you're gonna get some action you're gonna get some action and so i realize that millions of people celebrate halloween every year and we don't have millions of of possession stories every year but i think i think we're okay so i'm i'm ready to have a good old time mitch Tell us what's going on with that first story. Be careful there, buddy. We wouldn't want you getting possessed by any spooky Halloween demons. Now, for our first storyteller, please welcome Todd Masterson. Hi! Uh, I'm really excited to tell my spooky story. Uh, sorry my face is so red, but my parents in Missouri are Trump supporters and I've been fighting with them. <laughs> So that's great. Uh, Okay, where should I start? So like I said, I'm from Missouri. And when I was in college in 2001 or 1999, I can't remember. It was either after the millennium or right before. Anyway, my friends and I were driving at night to go to a campground by a river because the next day we were going to do a float trip. (laughs) Now, if you don't know what a float trip is, it's where a bunch of drunk college people sit in rafts and float down a river for 17 hours, and you just drink nonstop. Um, It's like white trash yacht club. So anyway, we're driving to go to this campground so we could do a float trip the next day. And we're driving through all these like back roads, hilly, just like super hilly, uh, I don't know, highways? No. Super hilly roads. They're roads. Do I know words? I don't know. Again, I've been fighting with my Trump supporting parents. So we're driving. It's probably midnight. We're driving these backwoods roads to get to this campground. And we may or may not have been pre-gaming a little bit by passing around a bottle of apple pucker. Again, Missouri. So we're passing around this bottle of pucker. We're just driving, we're listening to loud music. I'm pretty sure we were listening to Leonard Skinner. At least every time I think of this story, we are. So I think we were listening to Leonard Skinner driving to the campground, passing around a bottle of pucker. And we come over this hill and right when we like crest the hill, is that the word? Why do I not know words? Anyway, right as we come over the top of the hill, I mean, Instantly, a car was like, and I was driving, a car was just right in front of us, headlights, like like that, like coming over the hill, and I was like, oh, we're dead. Like as soon as I saw it, I couldn't, I couldn't swerve, like I couldn't react, I couldn't scream. I was just like, oh, we're dead. But that car swerved just in time, and I think I might have turned a little. I don't even think I swerved. I think I just just slightly turned the wheel because it was so fast. And that car sideswiped us so close that it knocked off my rear view mirror and it scraped up the side of the car. Um, But we just barely missed each other. Like, I'm talking like maybe an inch uh, and we would have had a head on collision and I could have died. So we freak out, we're really, and the car just kept going, they never stopped. And so we pull over in the next driveway Uh, because I'm like shaking so scared and like freaking out and I've never had any kind of like near death experience like this before. So I'm just like super freaked out and like shaking really bad. 
And we pull over in this driveway, maybe five seconds later, like we just, I turned as soon as I could turn. And we're sitting there like, I jumped out of the car and like I kind of felt sick, like I was gonna throw up or something. And then I look back and I see that the road we were driving on was like a cliff. And I, when I swerved just a tiny bit, I remember hearing and feeling like the gravel of the side of the road for like one second. And then I kind of felt it again after the guy sideswiped us. So in my head, I'm positive that when I swerved, I my tire went off the edge of this cliff, right? And then swerved back on. Now, the reason this is creepy is because I want to say maybe the day before my mom and I, Trump supporter, my mom and I had a conversation about guardian angels and I don't believe in anything. I'm like super atheist. I don't believe in anything. But to this day, I, my brain still thinks that a guardian angel like lifted the car when we swerved off the road. Because when you look back to where it happened, like there's no way I stayed on the road. Like th my car, and we weren't even going that fast. So I don't think I like went fast enough to fly off the side of the road. But like, I think a ghost or an angel or somebody held up my car. Isn't that weird? Like I should have died. I did later get in trouble because it was my mom's car and my mom's the type of person to always blame me. Again, Trump supporter. Um, but even though I could have almost died, it was my fault that the car got sideswiped and we lost the rear view mirror, which cost like $300 to replace. So that's my scariest, creepiest, it's more creepy than scary story because I don't know how we survived it. Um, okay, happy Halloween. Gotta get back to fighting the Trump supporting parents. Love you. Wow, what a spooky story. Oh, well, hey there, little bat. Where did you come from? Where am I from? I'm from the great state of Southern Wuhan, China. Oh, you sure are a long way from home. Well, I'd love for you to meet our friend, Clifford. So far, so good. No demons have entered my body so far. <laughs> but um, that was a truly horrifying tale. Up next, we have Danielle Perez. So you guys want to hear a scary story? I'm Danielle Perez and I'm gonna give you one. So in my mid-20s, I didn't date the best guys. I started seeing this guy who didn't have a car but had a huge dick and that was enough for me. He spent the night once and um, I was on my period. Now, I don't care about period sex but I had read on the internet that you can just leave your tampon in while you have period sex. Um, in hindsight, this proved to be a terrible idea. So I left the tampon in and he has a huge dick and it's just ramming that tampon up my vagina. I mean, and it's up there. And I go to sleep, I don't even pee after having sex because I'm in my mid twenties and like truly just focused on getting a UTI at any opportunity I can. So, we fuck, I go to sleep. The next morning I wake up to get ready for my hell job of being in accounts receivable for water filtration and parts manufacturer. I go to the bathroom, I pee, I feel around for the tampon string and it is not there. I'm like curious, kind of try to fish around in my outer vagina, you know, just like where is the tampon string? It's not there. Now I'm starting to get concerned. My fingers are going deeper and deeper inside me and I am not feeling the tampon or the string. Now at the time I was using OB tampons. They're the ones that you gotta 
right up there, no applicator. So they're like little bullets. So they're not the long, gross, you know, tampon in a Starbucks Frappuccino that we're used to. They're the little tiny, just plugging it right in the hole kind of tampons. They just get wide <clears throat> to fill up your hole. So I'm getting concerned, I'm freaking out, I'm very worried because I'm gonna be late for work and even though I hate this job, it is a job and it pays me to be on time, allegedly. Um, I'm freaking out. My boyfriend, uh, well, <laughs> the guy I'm fucking, um, he realizes that something's going on, he's like, now what's going on? I'm like, Chris, hi. Can you possibly fish around my vagina and try to help me get out this tampon? Now, we had been sleeping with each other for maybe two weeks. I mean, this is not the person I've had intimate conversations with. He had been inside me, yes, but I did not know his middle name. And he, again, did not have a car. So um, I'm sitting on my toilet. He's on his hands and knees trying to get <laughs> this object out of sight of me and um, it's not working. So then I have a brilliant idea. I was like, wait, 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 what if I get in the bathtub and kind of use the edge of the bathtub to just kind of like brace myself so I can just like spread eagle outside of the tub, you know? So I'll just be in the tub and my legs displayed wide open in front of you, you know, and you'll have, you'll, there'll be light, you know, so you can really see and get in there. No loop, right? No, no, no nothing. Just hand inside my vagina while I'm spread eagle in a tub. He pretty much fisted me and I was crying and it was bad and I was terrified that I was gonna have to go to the ER. That was the thing I was most scared about because then, you know, the ER, right? They're gonna ask questions like, why would a tampon be inside you? Because I read on the internet that you can leave your tampon in while you fucking have period sex. So I'm like, please get this tampon outside of me. He is able to fish it out. He is like a champion. He takes it out, he's holding the bloody tampon. He's a hero. I am eternally grateful. And um, then he told me that he didn't want to be my boyfriend anymore. So that's a pretty spooky, scary story, isn't it? That story gave me the creeps. What did you think, little bat? That's a lot of blood. And I like blood. <laughs> oh. How about you, Cliff? Yeah, that, man, that story, that is gonna freak me out for years. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this Halloween. These, these stories are getting weird, huh? So far, so good, though. I'm glad I'm experimenting tonight. There's been no... No issues at all, so... I love it. No demons here. <laughs> Let me get back to what I was doing. Oh. Okay. Well, why don't we introduce our next friend? Please welcome Jason Webb. I used to work at this Christian camp. Uh, like we worked in guest services. It was like me and two of my other friends. And um, one of the jobs we had of uh, guest services was at night we just had to walk around to all the buildings uh, and turn off the lights. Uh, I just heard this ghost story the night before. I heard this story about Lantana. They were talking, uh, Lantana was the hotel that was on campus that anybody could rent out. Um, 
and it used to be a hospital. And I knew it used to be a hospital because like there was a morgue and that's where we played ping pong ball because it was the coolest place on the whole campus. We would put, we put ping pong tables in there. We put sofas we found in there. And like, we would just go break into the morgue and play ping pong. So I knew it was, I knew it used to be a hospital. I knew it was a morgue. We thought everybody went to heaven. Who cares, dude, it's not creepy at all. And so I knew it used to be a hospital, but I never heard this story about the gray nurse. Everybody that stayed in that room I doubt it's everybody, but like a majority of people that stay in that room say that they're woken up in the middle of the night by a lady dressed in all gray standing over their bed. Her clothes look old and she just stares at them. And to me, that's just creepy if a normal person does it, but like, if it's like something you can see through, isn't that crazy? So it's my turn to turn off the lights. And I knew her room was the top one. And I go around to all of them, I turn them all off. And I get the lantana, I saved it for last because it's like a straight shot to the um, guest services. The top light's on. And I'm like, okay. I guess some kids went in there like telling ghost stories or whatever. So I go up there and I turn it off and uh, I was scared. I was scared. And I was like, you are a grown man scared of an old lady's ghost. An old lady that cared about people you're scared of her. So I was like, all right, I'll just fucking lights out run downstairs as fast as I can, sprint towards the door. Anyway, I get out of the place and I'm getting in my truck and um, I look up and the light's on. And I'm like, okay. You know, you probably just did a shitty job. Like maybe there was two switches, you just hit one. You were scared half to death, you didn't even look when you hit it. Maybe you missed it and you fucked up and now you gotta go back up there. So I was like, all right, fair enough. I won't be as scared this time. So I go up and I was twice as scared. So I was scared, but I looked in the fucking room and the light was on. I'm like, ah, maybe I didn't hit anything. Maybe I just hit the wall. It's like, that's totally possible. So I go in there and I look at the light, one switch, I turn it off and I look in the room. I'm like, the light's off. Took my finger off of it. The light's off. And then I ran downstairs, I skipped fucking seven to eight steps running down that son of a bitch and I got out of the fucking house. And I get to my car and I'm not even in the truck. Like I got to like the door, my hands on the handle and I look up and that fucking light is on again. And I'm like, you tried your best, you know? Like you looked and made sure it was off. We made sure you did that. That was me talking to myself. I was like, we made sure. We double checked right and left hemisphere. We checked with each other and we made you do that. Now that's on again. I'm like, okay, someone's clearly messing with me. Some kids are trying to scare me. Guest services, just someone that's getting paid shitty to do my job. They're gonna try to scare me. I'm like, fair enough. I'm gonna scare them. So I go inside. And I'm like, I bet it gets pretty scary in here when there's no way to turn on a light whatsoever once I'm gone. So I go into the kitchen, I open the breaker box. Pa, pa, pa! Cut them all off. And I run out. And I'm like, I hope they piss themselves. I hope they piss themselves. 
and I get in my car and I start going down the road to guest services. It's like a straight shot. And I look in my rearview mirror and I see the light come on. Other times I just saw it on. This time I saw it come on. So I called the head of the camp and I told him, I was like, all right, um, don't know what's going on. First off, I'll tell you that right up front, don't know what's going on. Uh, I turned the light off at the top, came back down, back on again, came back down, back on again, came back down, turned all the power off to the building. The whole thing can't get power. Light back on. What do you want me to do about that? He's like, turn it off. So I, I said, fuck it, that thing can stay on. I told him it went off. He wasn't going to check. I was like, it's off now. He's like, good, go to bed. I was like, that thing stayed on all night. I guess that's more of a story of me just doing a bad job at something. Like, what's special about that? This time a ghost was the reason I did a bad job. I did a bad job because of a ghost. Sorry, don't fire me. I just got scared. <laughs> No, well, I mean, I voted now, but... Okay, well, Cliff, how are you doing? Why don't you help me introduce our final storyteller, Abora? Hello, I'm Abora, the drag queen of the year. Here is my spooky story. Now, a couple years back, I was dating my ex. He lived in Gwinnett, Georgia. It is the middle of nowhere. We were coming home one night after possibly fucking in the park, and we were getting a bunch of food out of the car. So we were talking to each other over the car, you know, like over the hood of the car. Uh, and we just, we all of a sudden started hearing a buzzing sound, like a bunch of bugs around us, right? Like a cicada kind of sound. And the sound just kept getting louder and louder and louder and louder until we couldn't even hear each other talk over just four feet of the car. So, we, uh, but, so we're trying to talk to each other over this car, and all of a sudden the noise just stops. And it's silent. And the silence was only short lived when it was interrupted by a horrible scream. It sounded something like, uh. <laughs> But much more scary. Uh, it sounded like a human scream that morphed into like a digitally enhanced howl. And I cannot explain what made that noise or what happened to it. Uh, after texting my ex recently, he's let me know that he's heard it three more times uh, since then, but never again. Uh, and yeah, it's not coyotes because they make a more yip, 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 yip sound. And it was definitely bugs and then scream. So yeah, that's my unexplained cryptid story. Thank you so much for tuning in. a fucking horrifying story. Uh, I'm just really happy to be here. 
Oh. Oh, how did I end up in a fucking bomb? <laughs> well, Clifford is possessed. But Demon, do you want to go ahead and play us out? Oh, yeah! Ah! This was a lot of fun. I'm so happy I showed up. I dragged my fucking red nuts across hell, across the universe, to this little shitty blue dot. Ah! And I'm so happy I did. Thanks for having me. Wee! I gotta spend the day as a fucking bum. But here I am. Fuck yeah. Until next time, motherfucker. I'm not gonna stop. We've been playing this back and forth all night long, and you don't think I got a little riled up? Pat, oh. Come give me some shit. Stop it, Pat. Stop. Please. Stop. Stop. Okay, stop. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of our storytellers. Have a great night, and a happy Halloween.